Nova Scotia health officials say a recent fatal case of invasive group A streptococcal disease in Moncton is a good reminder to be vigilant. Cases across the country are on the rise, putting health care officials on alert. Dr. Ryan Summers is with Nova Scotia Health to serve Canada, seeing some pretty big numbers here. But what are you seeing in this province right now when it comes to strep A? Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, public health, we tend to focus closely on a, a severe form of group A strep called invasive group A strep. And uh, we have, uh, for this respiratory season and the one before that, we have seen an increase uh, in cases over the, over the short little while, even, uh, even, this, uh, even the past uh, few months. So what, what is the concern there? Strep A, um, obviously people are used to hearing, you know, someone has strep and so on, but uh, it's, there are some very problematic cases, aren't there? Yes, for sure. So uh, group A strep is a known uh, bacteria that can cause common infections such as a strep throat, which is uh, a fever and sore throat. It can cause impetigo, which is like a rash around the nose and mouth. It can cause a scarlet fever, ear infections and skin infections. So it's a, it's a run the mill infection we'll see in, in children, we'll see it in older adults. Uh, but in some individuals, that bacteria can get in parts of the body where it's not supposed to be and cause more severe infections. So the ones we're really concerned about in terms of severe infections are something called toxic shock syndrome. It's like a blood infection where your blood pressure drops really low and there's organ damage. There's necrotizing fasciitis, which is a type of, um, it's also called a flesh eating disease and also can cause uh, meningitis as well. And these, these uh, conditions can uh, happen quite quickly. These severe forms of uh, group A strep infections can happen quickly and they do require medical care right away. So it's a little scary on that front. You know, what should you be, what should you, should you be looking for? How prevalent uh, is this? So it, it's not that common. Um, it is something we, we always see cases every year. This year uh, and the previous year, we have seen an increase. Uh, interestingly, during the times of the pandemic, when there were a lot of public health measures in play, uh, there was a reduction in COVID cases, but also a result in reduction in other infectious diseases. So we've gone from a six-year low to now actually a six-year high. The big thing to watch out for with this particular disease is a, a fever. Um, the fever is usually, uh, it progresses. Um, the other big red flags to watch out for um, are a decreased uh, fluid intake, decreased food intake, so we're not going to the bathroom as much. If it's a child, their, their diapers aren't as, as wet. Uh, but the symptoms come on very, very quickly. They might be, someone might be more sleepy or lethargic or lightheaded. Uh, in some situations, they have a rash. It can spread more extensively and, and, and get much worse. I mean, the big thing is we, wa we watch out for, if your symptoms aren't getting better after 48 hours, you should definitely get seen by a healthcare professional. And so what happens? You get tested. Uh, can you go to a pharmacy and get tested for this, or does it have to be a doctor's office? So for the, the common known bacterial infections, you know, they can be uh, tested uh, through a, a swabbing. If it's, a, if it's a, a sore throat, we're suspecting group A strep. Sometimes it can be based on the, the clinical characteristics, what the physician or the nurse practitioner or pharmacy is based on their physical exam and interview. But when it comes to the real severe forms, uh, most people in that situation are going to be very, very sick. So they'll have a high fever. Uh, and those situations need to be assessed by a healthcare professional immediately to, to help determine if you have the more invasive form. And that usually requires uh, blood tests and other investigations. There was the case of a man recently in Moncton who, who put off that visit to the doctor or hospital because he just thought it was the flu. Mm. What, what advice do you have for someone who, who might be inclined that way? Yeah, so if your symptoms aren't getting better, the, the key thing is to, to get checked out. So there's a lot of ways you can do that in Nova Scotia. We have a number of virtual care options. We have a new Your Health Nova Scotia app. There's 811 virtual care, your own nurse practitioner or, or family doctor. We have these primary care pharmacy clinics. So it's really important in those situations, if you're not getting better and things are getting worse, it's really important to be assessed by a, a clinician. So usually after two days, if you're not better, get checked out. Yeah, because someone may think they don't want to trouble the system or wait for a long time in a waiting room, but you're saying put that thinking out of your mind. Right. Yeah. The, these people can get very sick within 12 to 24 hours. It's very, very rapid. All right, doctor, really appreciate your time talking to us about this. Thank you so much. Great. Thank you.